So my name is Przemysl Biecek, and I'm going to tell you something about the Dalek package and uh, how the Dalek can help you to understand complex predictive models. So maybe I should start with a question why it's important, um, and I will use an example uh, from a book of Cathy O'Neill. Uh, maybe some of you know the book. If not, I strongly recommend you to read the book. Uh, she sh showed a lot of examples how black boxes uh, created with this big data can actually uh, cause a lot of harms. Like one example is that uh, there was a teacher fired because a black box said that he's a bad teacher. Well, actually what has happened, it was a very good teacher uh, with a very good students, but the students were good before and after the class, so you know, no progress, let's fire her. So a lot of examples like that, and a lot of examples that you should actually care what your black box is doing. So I just uh, re um, removed the big data word to the black boxes, and I think the whole book is about why you need to explain black boxes. Okay, and actually there is something like the right to explanation. In uh, European neuron is a big thing, in other countries as well. Like it's kind of civil right to uh, be able to know why some automated uh, algorithm sets that your score is low or, or, or high. So it's our civic rights. So how to do this? I will use a single ex a simple example. Uh, data set with six columns, one uh, variable price of a uh, square meter to predict uh, for five other variables to, exp to create a classifier. And I will use the, the, this data set to show you how it might work, how the explanations might, might actually look like. So what you would like to have is to, for a single present, uh, prediction, you would like to have a decomposition which says that because of a uh, floor equal to one or because of a district equal to something, the mm, final prediction is 2,000, but the contribution of the uh, uh, district is that large, the contribution of surface is that large. And it's kind of easy for linear models. It's maybe not straightforward for random forest models, but it turns out that you can do this for any kind of models. And there is a use case that I'm going to show you how it might work like. So you can imagine a situation that you're, um, you have a population of observations, there are some predictions for every, every, every observation, and then you need to go from the situation you have the whole population of predictions and you have a, a pr prediction for a single model. So during the way from one uh, setup to another setup, you are just frozen every coordinate. So you are set, uh, setting all observations to have district equal to Ursus or all observations to have uh, surface equal to something. So you are changing the uh, distribu distribution of predictions, and then you can kind of extract from these changes, you can extract information which variable have what, how large importance. So you can uh, change this kind of reasoning into a plot like the one on the right side, uh, which actually decompose the final predictions into pieces. And it's very useful because you can say that because of this variable, you gain something uh, of this size. So there are some other uh, plots in the Dalek package that helps you to understand what is going on with your, fine, uh, with your black box model. One of them is the Ceteris Paribus plots, and basically it shows you how the model response will change if you just shuffle change a single variable. So here you have like four variables, and you can uh, ask yourself, okay, if the surface will be smaller or larger, how the model response will be different. So this is kind of what if scenarios. You can understand what will happen if uh, variable will be different. So you can imagine situations like there is a patient, patients got a very low score, and uh, you are saying, okay, to increase your score, you need to move this variable that much, because then at this model will say that, okay, it's enough to change the score. Uh, yeah, so there is a, a short example how to do this. Actually, in the Dalek package, uh, it's very, very uh, simple. You just need to create a wrapper around your model because it will work for any model, so it's totally model agnostic. Uh, you just need to use a function which is called explainer. Here it's called ceteris paribus uh, function. And then for this function, there is, over, uh, there is a generic plot function with, uh, uh, that is working for this kind of explainer and creates a plot. So there are other explainers that I'm going to show you quickly. Uh, one of them is showing not only how the black model is working, but also how good it's working in the uh, local settings. So it might be that the model is good on average, but maybe for this particular patient is not that uh, is not that good. So plots like that, uh, plots like that uh, shows uh, how good is the fitness of um, neighbors for a given point. So here you have this black box. Uh, here you have this uh, this black line, sorry, with the uh, circle in the middle. So the circle is the observation of interest, and the line is the satellite previous plot. So what will happen if you have smaller or larger surface? So now you can imagine that you are taking a similar apartments 
and you are checking how the similar apartments will behave, and the um, red and blue lines shows you uh, how, much, how large are the um, residuals for, for neighbors. So here, the residuals are kind of small, symmetric, so you can say locally the model is nicely fitted, but uh, you can say that for other, other observations, for the same model, but for other observations, the residuals are very, very bad. So in this case, you can say that maybe model is good, but not for this apartment. For this apartment, actually, it's not that good at all. So maybe you should use a different model in this case. Okay, so the Dalek package is doing much more things. Actually, there is a lot of questions that you can answer with the Dalek package. So I will just, I, I, I think I have time, so I will show you a few more. <coughs> Actually, when you think about uh, prediction, you think about the pipeline like you are starting with some knowledge, with some data, then you are creating a model, so this is the step A, and then having a model, you create a prediction, so this is a step B. And uh, our thinking is like, okay, so what you can do to go from model to your knowledge, so can you use your black box model to increase your knowledge? Or can you use your prediction to improve a model? Because having a bad fit, it's not only, only, only that the fitness is bad, but maybe you can know why the model was wrong and what you can do to make it better. So there are these uh, steps D and C, and Dalek is addressing these two steps uh, yeah, in the pipeline. So I have a very sim uh, simple example, tail of two models. I will use two models, random forest model, the elastic one, and linear model, a very, uh, let's say, basic additive model. And I will uh, show you how you can use Dalek to compare these two models. So what will happen, it turns out that uh, I fitted uh, both models to some data set. I've tested its performance on another data set, apartment test. And it turns out that the square root of both models is almost identical. It's 283. So we have two models, very different one, a linear model and the random forest model, with almost exactly the same uh, pr uh, performance. And of course, the question is, which one to choose? Any, question, any suggestions? Do you like more linear models or random forest models? Some people are saying that uh, linear models are easier to uh, implement, so they are better, or they are simpler in structure. Others are saying that uh, random forest is more elastic, so you, you may uh, struggle. Uh, actually, what well, you can use the dialect to, to choose. So uh, I will show you the PDP plot to uh, explain how the plot is working. I need to start with this plot. So you can imagine a situation that you have uh, apartments, on X scale, you have the construction year. On the Y scale, you have uh, predictions for these apartments. And then you can create the what-if scenarios for every apartment, what will happen if the construction year will be smaller or larger. So these plots are called individual co conditional expectations. They simply show uh, what would happen if the single apartment would be different. And you can average all of these uh, curves. And the average actually is called partial dependency plots. And it shows, on average, how the model responds to the uh, for the uh, given variable. So you can create plots like that easily with the Dalek package. It's just a single instruction, single variable. What you can do more, and what is really nice, you can take many models, like two or three, and you can compare them. So here I have actually these two models with equal performance, and I can see how the average response looks uh, for a variable construction year. And you see that there are two very different behaviors. Random forest is a very elastic one. It found that there is a nonlinear relation, and the nonlinear relation is kind of U-shaped. It makes sense here because uh, the apartments on the left are before the Second World War, so they are nicely located, uh, you know, very nice apartments, so this is why they are expensive. Then after the Second World War, there were a lot of buildings with not that high quality, so these apartments are on average um, not that expensive, and then the recent apartments are relatively nicer, so they are more expensive. So it's not a uh, uniform, uh, it's a monotonic relation, but Random Forest found it. Linear model is not able to capture this relation, so they are different. Excellent. You can do similar things for categorical variables. Uh, so here for categorical variable, you have a district. Uh, here we have like 10 districts, and you can use black box to actually understand which districts were closer to each other. So here you have kind of dendrogram, and dendrogram shows you which levels are more or less similar to each other based on the black, bo black box model predictions. Okay, so we were talking about the performance. There are some plots for the performance as well. So here what you have, you have a distribution of residuals. Most, in most cases, we just think about accuracy as a single number, but you can think about the whole distribution of residuals. And what, can, what you can learn here is like for random forest, uh, the red dots are, the, are for the average accuracy. So it's almost identical. But you can see that for random forest, the residuals are in most cases smaller, but in some cases they are very, very large. 
why for the linear model they are more or less in the middle. So you can use plots like that actually to understand what is the performance, how uh, these models are different. Here you have kind of empirical distribution, um, empirical uh, ECD F curve to compare these models. So also you can see that uh, Rano Forest in most cases has smaller residuals, but uh, there is 10% of use cases in which actually the Rano Forest um, has a very large residuals and uh, predictions are very, very bad. Uh, there is also a package called Auditor in which you can use a diagnostic plot for your models. So such diagnostic plots are very popular for linear models, are very popular for mixed models. I haven't saw a lot of people that are using such plots for random forest, and it's wrong because you can learn a lot from these diagnostic plots also for uh, models like random forest, support vector machine, or, or something. And the last plot I am going to show you is a plot that compares the performance of a model. So simply you can use Dalek to calculate the performance um, how, how different variables affect the global performance. So the first part of my talk was about a single prediction. This part is about the global, uh, global explanations. So yeah, here you can see that uh, different variables contribute um, differently for one or second model. You can compare two models so you can learn like, for example, here, both models have similar performance, but for random forest, variables like construction year are important, while for linear model, construction year wasn't that important. So you can simply learn which variables are consumed but by, by which model and uh, why, why it's so. Uh, there is more explainers. Actually, there is a very easy map how you can find the right explainer for you. So there are just less than three questions because they're on average 2.87 uh, yeah, questions that are, need to be asked to choose the right explainer for you. You can easily Google this, this map uh, with a question uh, not only Lyme because Lyme is a very popular uh, um, topic in this area. But here we have um, many explainers that are not related only to line. The usage is very simple. You can do just three steps to use explainer from this package. Wrap a model, create explainer, plot explainer. So every explainer can be created with just three simple lines. You just need to change the name of a variable in the second step. So they are easy to use. And uh, the last thing that I'm going to say are actually about a use case. Uh, it's called a model down. The model down. So maybe some of you are using package down. It's a very nice package, you can take any package and create a website for it. So here the idea is actually that you can create a website for your model. Or you can have a collection of models. And I will show you how it looks like. So uh, yeah, you can simply uh, just take a model, use a model down package, and then you have a website like that. Uh, you, here you have links to your model, so you can actually download the model as a binary object. And you can also go through different uh, uh, tabs. I hope it's working. The connection is not that... Uh, fast, but yeah, simply you have here different explainers. You can go through these explainers. Everything is uh, stored as a static website, so you can explore these models. There are some ba basic statistics. Yeah. For some reason, it's not working here, but yeah, it's due to the, uh, I think, wireless connection. Uh, also, you can use these explainers to actually learn something about your models. So here, this is the really last uh, things that I am, thing that I am going to show you is like uh, you can simulate the data, know some truth, and then you can check how different models are learning this truth. So here we have like a true relation, which is marked with the green line, and you can compare how different models learn this relation. Like linear model was not able to learn this relation, random forest is able, but it's kind of biased towards the mean, while the other models like uh, there is an RMS package or there are some SVM models are more uh, eager to learn th this relation. So you can simulate different relations and see how these black boxes actually are learning uh, things that you know that they are true. Uh, yeah, so lots of different use cases. You can find much more about these use cases. You can find much more doc uh, documentation at the Dalek web page. Web page. Uh, Dalek is on CRAN, but uh, there is much more materials on the GitHub uh, web page. So yeah, go there and find some use cases there. No, yeah. Do I have time or? Yeah, if I don't have, uh, if you have time, so I'm just going to say that there's a lot of people that have heard about Lime. Uh, yeah, because it was a very popularized method. And Lime is very good, especially for, for figures, for images. But also I met a lot of people that are saying that uh, uh, Lime is not working in their use case. Like uh, they were trying to do this and it's, it's not working for them. And uh, yeah, so if you have similar experience, actually you should try breakdown or methods implemented in, in our package because they are more targeted to the mixed data. Like Lime was very good for images, is good for text data, not that um, 
straightforward is to change the domain to the mixed data, but uh, if you are working with mixed data like continuous categorical data, try breakdown or Dalek, uh, it should work for you as well. Yeah, so thank you. I will, uh, so the question was, what is the difference between different explainers? Uh, I will answer this in two steps. One step will be like, uh, in Dalek, you have many different explainers. So some of them are targeting the global explanation, some of local. So if we are talking about, only about the local explanations, I think that the easiest way to explain differences is with this plot. Uh, so the line, what LIME is doing, LIME is trying to fit the local model around the observation of interest. So here you have this uh, white dot, and Lime will be trying to fit a lot model around, so then the model will be like, you no, know, with uh, positive uh, slope. Uh, so here we see it's not uh, right, because in global, actually the, 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 the slope should be negative. So what, what um, breakdown is doing, breakdown is more or less comparing the uh, prediction for this observation in relation to average prediction for the model. So it would say that on average, the model responds like uh, 4,500. For this prediction, for this observation, it's uh, like 200 below the average. So the contribution of this variable is negative and it's over size 200. So it's diff working with very different approaches. Like in general, we have the Sharpie values and uh, breakdown. They are more related to decomposition of the final prediction to pieces. So there are some similarities between, between Shapley and break, uh, Breakdown. Breakdown is kind of approximation, greedy approximation of a Shapley, which is faster and sometimes even easier, easier to understand. Lime, it's more about local structure. So in many cases, for models which are, you know, these strange characteristics, it's not um, good to have this local approximation because it might be very misleading if you don't have monotonic or smooth uh, relation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so of course uh, this session is about classification and I was presenting regression because it's much easier for me, but actually Dalek is working for classification as well and is working for survival data as well. The only requirement that we have is that the model needs to respond with a continuous, uh, some um, numerical value. So the uh, results from model should be numerical. So you need to use either votes or something. You can specify the link function so you can link the votes from random forest to uh, to probability or something, but uh, yeah, it needs to be um, numeric. And then you can all of these things and explain the probability of something or odds of something with the same uh, approach. Yeah, yeah. So it's really model agnostic. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you.